Welcome to this video of Eco Crypto Educate, explaining what is money and main differences with the currency. Concept of money being crucial to grasp the subjects that will be discussed in the next videos, made it kind of obvious to start with this. According to Merriam-Webster, money is something generally accepted as a medium of exchange, a measure of value, or a means of payment. Now let's look at it from a functionality perspective rather than actually defining it any further. Money has three primary functions. A medium of exchange, a unit of account, and a store of value. Here are the times. And here is Dinah. Dynamite is a teenager in high school. Lately, she's considering babysitting to earn some pocket money. Dinah is ready to give away some of her time. She's able and willing to deliver a service that consists in making sure that the kids she babysits remain in a safe and controlled environment in the absence of their parents. On the other hand, her neighbors, the Times, would be more than happy to flee for a night at the restaurant without their son Justin. When somebody produces a good or delivers a service, perhaps useful, it is likely that someone else, somewhere could make use of and would be willing to benefit from such good or service since money is used to intermediate the exchange of goods and services it is said that money functions as a medium of exchange in our case money is a mean used by the times to compensate or to benefit from the services that dinah has been willing to deliver second function is the unit of account since it allows setting standard monetary unit of measurement used for describing the value of something Money is considered providing a function of unit of account. It could be goods, of any sort. It could also be services, as we've seen earlier with dynamite. It could also be assets, such as a house, a precious stone, or treasury bonds. In Paris, euros are used to describe the value of houses' accommodations. In New York, we use US dollars to describe them. To a certain extent, Loyalty points received from certain airline companies and that can be redeemed to get flight tickets could almost be considered units of account. Trips may be tagged in loyalty miles. In prisons, it happens often that prisoners use cigarettes as a unit of account. To buy a shirt, you need say five cigarettes. To function as a unit of account, money must be divisible into smaller units without loss of value. That property is called fungibility. Money is fungible since it is readily interchanged for another of like kind. A $1 bill is convertible into 4 quarters or 10 dimes. Money is fungible because it doesn't matter what physical dollar bill you have. Every dollar bill is worth $1, every $5 bill is worth $5, and so on. Short break. For few months now, you've probably been hearing about NFTs standing for non-fungible token and coming from the ecosystem of cryptocurrencies. First SMS ever sent, was recently sold in Paris for 150,000 US dollars. But that's a whole different story. We'll come back to the NFTs in another video. Finally, last function of money is the store of value. To act as a store of value, money must allow to be reliably saved, stored, and retrieved. It must be predictably usable as a medium of exchange when it is retrieved. Additionally, the value of money must remain stable over time. It is accepted that money can transfer or hold purchasing power from one period to another, as money is suited to store value. Let's get back to our favorite babysitter, Dynamite. Money being a store of value means that Dinah can exchange the $20 she earned from babysitting to invite her friend Cole for lunch on his birthday. It also means that Dinah could save those $20 she had earned from babysitting to invite her friend for lunch not on his birthday but on Valentine's Day. It also means, she could have saved those same $20 to invite her friend for lunch in July. It also means, she could have saved those same $20. Well, you got the point. You understood the idea with a trivial example. Now replace Dinah with the times, the family we met at the beginning of this video. Replace the lunch at the fast food with the house in the suburbs. Replace the months with years. Finally, replace the $20 with $200,000.
In 2018, the Times were about to buy this house for $200,000. At the last moment, Mrs. Time wanted to look for other options. A year later, in 2019, the Times were once again about to buy the same house. However, since Mrs. Time is of a hesitant nature, she had last moment doubts again. Eventually, they bought the same house one year later. In 2020. Hold on. How come when I wanted to buy a house, the more I waited, the more I had the impression that all prices kept going up? Are you really saying that they have waited for three years, but that they still managed to buy the same house at the same price? Excellent intervention agent holder. My answer is yes. And. No. Remember, the first video. I mentioned I would be taking shortcuts from times to times, for an easier understanding. Well. Here is the first shortcut. At this point, I am considering that housing prices remain stable over the time. No particular change in the neighborhood justifying a change in price, upwards or downwards. No change in the house condition, etc. More importantly I am ignoring the phenomenon called inflation, which is a dense subject deserving a dedicated video. This will come later. So. Let's get back to the times, our favorite family. In 2018, they had $200,000 that allowed them buying a specific house. Yet, they actually kept that amount in their bank account, for two years, after which they eventually bought that same house. In effect, money has allowed them to maintain and carry throughout the time a certain ability to purchase or obtain something for a specific value. For that reason, it is considered that money is a store of value. You have now learned how and why money is a medium of exchange, a unit of account and a store of value. At this stage, you might already be more knowledgeable than your banker. Before we split, two words on the difference between money and currency. Money is intangible, whilst currency is something such as coins, treasury notes, and bank notes that is in circulation as a medium of exchange. Money is the series of numbers that you see when logging in your bank account online. Currency is a representation of the money in a given region. Currency is printed, while money is created. Money is a store of value, while currency has the value that the government decreed it would have. That, was the short version. If you'd like me to further detail the differences, let me know it in your comments. Remember, if you have questions, or comments, Feedback would be more than welcome. And don't forget. If you like the videos, subscribe, share them and thumb up to help me develop this channel. And see you soon, with new videos.